War II was a cataclysmic global event for the future of humanity. For people of Japanese ancestry, it hit with this tremendous sense of dismay, confusion, anxiety, and crisis. The burden was horrendous. What's gotten lost in this shuffle is that Japanese Americans in Hawaii led the way. December 7, Sunday, I saw the zeros flying by, and I saw the tracers, and you can see the faces and everything. After I saw the live bullets, that's not maneuver. We knew something was going to happen, but we didn't think it was going to happen at Pearl Harbor. When you're young, you don't have any fear, you don't know any better, you just go for broke and volunteer. When the time came for us who were eligible to volunteer for 442nd, I had to go home and ask and discuss the matter with my father. My father was a Japanese national, and his uh, immediate response was that, by all means, you must volunteer. This is your chance to show your loyalty to this country, because I was concerned about the family. My father said, don't you worry about home. We will manage somehow. Those of us of Japanese ancestry, when we finally made it to Schofield, to Tent City, uh, we were segregated. Instead of being issued arms, we were given work gloves. We had to prove ourselves, not like some other people. The performance of the 100th Battalion, 442nd, the MIS, created a mental image for people that a multiracial society could work. There was a saying that developed, how we get along during the war will determine how we get along when the war is over. The war was such a horrendous event. We really had to sort of pry these stories out of people. We're still learning a lot of new things. We're getting a bigger perspective on how important it was. I got assigned as a jeep driver, which saved my life, because I don't have to be up on the front all the time. A lot of memories, but uh, some uh, hard to talk about, like going and looking for the wounded, and no matter what condition, you have to evacuate them. Some gruesome, but cannot help. That's your job. We boarded the precious Maui. It was a secret thing. And at that time, we were just wondering, where are we going? What's going to happen? We didn't know. Every day, we were concerned and worried about what's going to happen to our group. I'll never forget that. Next, I want to tell you how fierce the you have to, the memory of the battle that we had uh, so vividly. We were at the mercy of the Germans. Every night we were being bombed, you know. And that entire area, acres of it, were mined. We lost a lot of men there. When we attacked that morning, we were, had a full strength of 187 men. In 12 hours, that the next morning, we only had 29 men left, and I was one of them. Most of the, my friends were killed there. Yeah. That's one of the saddest days of my life. I'll never forget that. But how in the world that I was one of the 29? This was just at the beginning of the war. There was no hope about going home. You see, a soldier, he, he, he just obeys uh, orders. You do things that you don't want to do, but that you, you can't help it. A good soldier does his duty despite his personal feelings about that. Any minute, you may be the one to go. That's the feeling. It's, you got to expect the worst at a time like that. You got to accept things that you have no control over. 
The bad part of it is that the war experience stays with me, it's part of me, and I dream about it at night. We did well in the war, and it woke up America. Because of what the Nisei did in World War II, America changed its attitude toward us. And that all together made our life so much better. If you ask me if I'm satisfied that I have contributed to our community and our nation, I am satisfied. Way in the background, we did our job. They blazed a lot of trails for us, not just in the war. But when they came home, Dad's 97. The fact that he's still here and can talk about this, you know, that we still have him is just a miracle. They obviously did bring about a whole revolution politically, socially, economically, and, and that created tremendous opportunities for those of us that followed of all races. I'm just happy that I am an American enjoying life at my ripe old age. I'm happy I lived this long. As far as I'm concerned, we were just ordinary Hawaiian people. We were born in Hawaii, we were happy. We went to school, and when our country needed us, we went to contribute our time and lives for our country. And after we came back, Hawaii had changed because of us. I think people should realize that they can't take their present blessings for granted, that they resulted from people doing hard stuff, hard work, sacrifice. The Japanese American led the way in terms of democratizing Hawaii, and because it's America and America's dominant role in the world, I think they made a contribution to people everywhere. <laughs>